on September 8, 2008, at 01.18 p.m., a communications satellite blasted off from Placetsk into low Earth orbit. A satellite is directly connected to a particle accelerator and embarks a secret technological device which can detect ubiquitous BE ions. Meanwhile, in a conference room in London, John, bored stiff, listens to the speaker who is explaining that when a laser beam coming from the satellite strikes the center of the accelerator, which briefly recreates the enormously hot condition of the early universe. When a laser beam coming from the satellite strikes the center of the accelerator, it creates a collision of entangled photons, and the collision also releases a bionion, a subatomic particle which is superluminal, has no mass, and can be anywhere at once. It is the bion paradox. John comes back home and sees his wife's suitcases in the hall. Diane is an agent with World Food Program and is just back from a trip to Africa. How was your trip to Sudan? You should see the situation over there. In the Darfur region, about two million men, women and children have been displaced by an endless state of war. In North Sudan, the price of sorghum has increased so much that people are starving even more. John, who is bored with his lawyer's job, meets at a party Alan, who is a commodity trader. Alan offers him a position with a very high salary. John doesn't tell his wife that he has now a new job and he manages to snoop some important information about harvesting and crops that she's bringing from the field in Africa. Then, based on this precious information, John speculates on the London market, buying and selling sugar and rice. One day, Diane learns from a lady friend that John is now working for a large commodity trader. When she realizes that he lied to and spied on her, she tricks him by giving him false information about disastrous manioc harvest in Cameroon. And, you know, the last manioc harvest in Cameroon was a disaster. The next morning, in front of several computers, back at his office, John speculates big money on the manioc market. John suddenly realizes that he just lost a lot of money. Alan, John boss and friend, fires him. You're fired. When Diane comes back home from her trip to Cameroon, she finds her drunken husband snoring on the sofa. She offers him to come to Congo with her. Why don't you come to Congo with me? The whole village in Congo is there to welcome them, including the chief of the village. The drought has dried up our lands and we cannot grow enough corn to feed everyone. After a day in the village, John is appalled by the poverty and at the same time, is amazed by the dignity and the generosity of these people. Diane gathers all the village women in the classroom and shows them how to send powerful thoughts to the place where prices are fixed. She even draws a map of Africa, Europe, and London so they can concentrate very hard on the map and send good vibrations, explaining that their good feelings can actually reach the people over there who decide what the price of the food they buy is going to be tomorrow. Concentrate very hard on the map and send good vibrations, because your good feelings can actually reach the people over there. Suddenly, John enters the classroom with a package in his hand. During the night, John made a replica of a trader's keyboard in painted clay with the BUI key in green and the cell key in red. He also invites the women to concentrate on the keyboard, especially on the SL key. All day and night, the women take turns in the school to send powerful thoughts and to concentrate on the map as well as the painted clay keyboard. Meanwhile, without telling anyone, through his satellite connection, John is sending fake rumors to the traders all over the world in order to artificially trigger the speculation and lower the price of corn. After three days of intense meditation, prayers, and lots of chanting, a woman runs into the village holding several bags of corn and shouts, Prices are down. Look at all the corn I could buy. Hurry, hurry, go to the market and buy as much as you can. We made it. It's a miracle. Back in their apartment in London while having breakfast, John and Diane turn on the TV and watch the news in horror. Lady Miracle in Africa, a scam. John Sutland and his wife Diane, who works at WFP, allegedly sent wrong rumors on the net in order to create down speculation on the corn market, and they tricked poor women in Africa into a major scam. Diane realizes what John did and throws him out of the apartment. A year later, in an envelope crammed with stamps, 
Diane receives a letter from the chief of the village in Congo asking for her help as prices have gone up again and the village cannot feed the families. Back in the village in Congo, Diane is welcomed by everyone who still call her Lady Miracle. Again, she gathers the women in the classroom and asks them to concentrate on the map and the keyboard. Women take turns day and night picturing in their mind's eye a beam of light reaching this mysterious faraway place where the price of their corn is being fixed. In the middle of the second night, the chief suddenly shows Diane a red glow shining over the SL key on the right of the painted clay keyboard. In the morning, the chief tells all the women, Take the horse car to the market and fill it up with corn. And indeed, against all odds, the miracle happened. The prices have gone down and the village could buy basic food for their children and families. At the trader's office in London, an atmosphere of panic prevails on the floor. All traders are going mad and computers are going crazy. In space, next to the Russian satellite, the BE ion sends powerful light beams to the city, to Wall Street, to Chicago, and to all the main commodity marketplaces. Exhilarated, the BE ion cannot stop laughing watching the chaos it has created on the markets. Then, still laughing at full speed, far from the Earth, the BE ion bursts out in a cascade of beautiful multiple colors, 